Okay, and with the hemorrhagic ones, you have how much? 20%. 20% of all strokes. And you can divide them, and this is the best division, you can divide them on typical strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, typical. And typical means with location. And guess what? What is the location? What what vessels burst? What what did I tell you recently, like a few minutes ago? Which ones? <coughs> Typically the peripheral arteries again. Okay. So it's funny. Most common strokes, ischemic strokes are lacunal strokes. So it's that's when it is it is stopped the perfusion. And in this case, it's the opposite of stop perfusion. Well, it stops after it bursts. Okay. So but these the same arteries are responsible if there is a high pressure, and I told you, it's, it's connected in both places, hypertension. So if they burst, you're going to have a, it's like, what does it mean when, when I, maybe I, I don't know if I told you already, I think I did, but to some of you, but anyways, uh, all of you can imagine what is, what is ischemia, what, what, what happens, like there's a blockage of, of flow and everything. But what happens when a, a, a vessel ruptures in the brain? And it's very simple. I always tell you example, like if you played with hoses, like garden hoses, and if you point the hose into the ground and you turn on the, the water, it makes a hole there, doesn't it? It's really powerful. And you have 120 tors or a bit less. So it's a big pressure. And when this like explodes there, it destroys the tissue mechanically. Okay. And not only this, but what else? It's a compression, so it causes ischemia around it, because other other vessels are compressed by this. So ischemia starts over there immediately. So there is a mechanical destruction, ischemia again. And what else? The blood is around the artery, so over here you have this big, big factor of vasoconstriction, chemical. But somehow the blood irritates the the, the vessels and they constrict. Maybe it's a yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's a natural thing. It's pretty good. Okay, if I'm bleeding over here, it's good that it gets rather constricted. Okay, but it's not good over here. Okay, yeah. So, so typical bleeding means in typical places, and the the thing you should remember is that if if you're having a if these are the ventricles, typically the typical bleeding is like this. If this if this is a brain. And you know, on a CT or MRI or anywhere, this is what side? It's left and this is right. Okay, it's always inverted. It's like if you would look at a patient from the bottom, like if his feet are over here, head is there, like, and you are slicing it like this. So this is left, right? Okay. Anyway, so so it looks like a chunk of uh, white matter. Why is a on a CT? Why it is white? Why is this white bleeding? Why is all the why are all acute bleedings white? Tell me. On CT. Because it's not liquid, it's coagulum. It's coagulum and of course then it has a higher absorbency. X-ray won't go through it as well, and you see it white. Okay? All the white thing, all acute bleedings are actually coagulums. Okay? Yeah? So you have a you have a ping pong ball over here full of blood. Okay? and destroy tissue. These are typical bleedings. And you know what? You won't do anything with this. Nothing. It's there. The person has a problem. He has hemiparesis, whatever. But we know, in old times, they used to take out the blood, but they, they found out they made more mess than if they wouldn't do it. So if it's a typical bleeding on a CT like this, you won't do anything with that. OK? And it's called parenchymal bleeding. It's in the brain, in the tissue, there was, a, there was this rupture. But then you have another one. And these are very dangerous and, and special. But in terms of, so we have 20%, OK? And let's say 11%, I'm sorry, but 11% of all strokes are these typical ones, OK? So you have 80% of ischemic ones and 11 of these. And then you have like 7% of special ones. And these are called subarachnoid strokes. Subarachnoid strokes. Subarachnoid. So over here, 
you are bleeding or the blood is <coughs> here in subarachnoid space. And this is crucial and very dangerous. But watch out. We are talking about spontaneous bleeds. You can have also traumatic subarachnoid bleeding. It's not so dangerous at all. It's, it's, it's a funny <coughs> notice. Okay? But these spontaneous bleeds are severely dangerous and kill many people right away. Okay? And the majority of these bleeds, like 80%, are what? What do you call them? Everyone knows? Those are ruptured aneurysms. And these are so dangerous. And especially in Scandinavia, in Finland, you have so many of them. Yeah, if you want to, if you want a Someone, if you're going to have a supraarachnoid bleeding, rupture of aneurysm, you want a Finnish neurosurgeon to do it, okay? Because they are very used to it. But there, for example, in the U.S., it, his name is Spetzler. He has the most of them in, in the world. Spetzler, famous neurosurgeon. Spetzler. He does only that. But anyways, so and then lower percentage of something else. It's AV malformation. AV malformation. And what are uh, what 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 is basically if someone says he has supnar arachnoid bleeding he means rupture. <coughs> okay. okay. If you want to specify it, you mean he had his anal is ruptured. And if you want if you talk about AV malformation, you could talk about AV malformation. So basically, if you in the language of neurosurgery, if you say supnar bleeding, he had supnar you mean ruptured aneurysm, you should take it as a... But you know now that there are more types of supraarachnoid bleeding, but uh, always you mean the ruptured aneurysm. And as I draw the... What is that? And any of us can have it, unfortunately. Typically, it ruptures at the age of 45, 50. Yeah? And it's not always like they say doing sex or doing uh, picking up something. No, no, no. It's, it can be doing sleep. So yeah, it could be somehow like, you know, when you like increase the pressure, it, it could be connected, but doesn't have to be at all, okay? But anyways, well, what is that? What is aneurysm? The idea is, and we all have it since, we all, since our, it's somehow genetic, okay? And it, it there's some genetic, of course, that's why it's in Finland so much, and in, in, in northern countries. There is genetics to it. And basically, you should imagine you are an embryo, and your vessels are somehow developing. And during this process, somehow some parts of the, the vessel are not made as well. There are weaker parts of the wall of the, of the cerebral arteries. Okay? And as you grow, and you're living a fine life, and there's nothing. And suddenly, somehow, and when you're 30, 30, 40, a small bump starts to appear there. Okay? And that's why it is so... Uh, so dangerous because you don't know about it. And funny thing, if they would do an angiography, which is the golden standard for, to find an a aneurysm, to me today, and they find, we will find nothing there, in, in two years I could have aneurysm there. So basically you cannot like uh, screen for it. Okay? Yeah? And uh, somehow you're going to have aneurysm here, typically on these places, like on bifurcation. And typically we have, like, for example, mirror ones on both sides now. Okay? It could be anywhere. And watch out, it could be on basilary artery, anywhere over here, around the uh, circle of villus, or uh, on the basilary artery too, and vertebral arteries too. You can have aneurysms. Okay? And sooner or later, one of them will rupture. And how do people describe that? The ones which won't fall into coma immediately. And we have sort of... So, over here there is some factor of pressure, but the main factor is during your development, the vessel wall had a problem there. The, the what do you call the, the, the masons, they didn't do, they, they didn't use a good brick somewhere, okay? They, they, they cheated you a bit. And par part of your wall are, are not as strong. And it starts to bulge out. Okay? And now you never know. We call it a bomb in, in a brain, in, in a head. Because what, what if, if they are still living and are, are awake, how do they will describe it? Hey, doctor, 
And some people, they can have just this symptom, and that's the main symptom. And we talked about it in the beginning, but this is exception. Over here, you know about it right away. It's a severe, severe pain. It's a headache. You never, doctor, I never had this headache before. It was such a pain. I never had it before. If you had migraine, then imagine 100 times worse migraine, and that's the, or 10 times worse migraine, and that's, that could be the, the, the bleeding. At the moment when you bleed, pain, headache, never ever before. But some people will be neurologically totally fine, only headache, and they could be a bit managerial because blood is in. When blood gets into liquid uh, waste and, and, and into, into ventricles, especially, you can get bit, or you, can, you will get later very much meningeal. Okay, you won't be, you know what's meningeal. Okay, you're not able to to touch with your chin the, the chest. But so some are totally fine neurologically, and some are dead, in coma immediately. Okay, and there is a, and you don't have to know it, it but it's called a Hunt Hess. Hunt Hess. It's a grade. You're grading the. you you are evaluating his neurological state, and Hunt Hess one means. He's totally fine, no deficit, only headache, and he can be made. And Hannes 5 is coma. And Hannes 2 is, for example, that he has a facial palsy or something, and nothing else. He's, he's oriented, okay? And you can find it out, but don't waste your time on this. It's called Hannes score. And it, basically, but out of this, you can tell he has a chance to survive or not. If he's, he has Hannes 5 immediately when, after, the, the, after the stroke, after the burst of the aneurysm, typically they won't survive. No chance to save them. Okay, but there, there is an important, uh, let's say, management. I'll tell you now. But remember, if someone comes to your office and he says, "I never had such a headache and I'm not feeling well," he could have Hannes one, and never from today, please never forget, never underestimate this huge headache because he he he's fine. But what happened? Definitely, he's, he has blood where? And what, what is a typical CT? I, we call it subarachnoid bleeding. Subarachnoid bleeding, okay? But what, so where will be the blood? In the subarachnoid space, okay? In the subarachnoid space, so basically, basically, if we draw a you know, the, the, this, this is the what? Dura, dura mater, okay? And ba this is a pia, pia mater, that's laying on the, on the brain, and you are bleeding here in the subarachnoid space. This is arachnoidea. That's where the liquid is, okay? But you students, you always imagine this on the top of the brain, okay? But no, no. Typically, where you see the bleeding is at the bottom of the brain. Okay, so and typically, what you will see, if th this is this is let, let's say a, what are the what are the spaces over here we have? And I'll show it to you on a CT. But w what spaces we have? Oh, th these are all liquor spaces. Everywhere is liquor. And the blood got into the liquid because the, the vessels are there and they rupture into the supraarachnoid spaces. <coughs> and this is full. These are the basilary cisterns and they are full of blood. So basically, if you want to find out if he has he had a, he had a severe pain, so you immediately send him to a CT. And you, you, you want to find a, a cut over here on the CT. And if you see blood there like this, or just a part, doesn't matter, it could be a part. Then it's very probably this. It's it's a aneurysm. And why it, why it is so important to know it's aneurysm? Why? Tell me. It could be fine. He just says I had pain. Okay. Blood is out. It touches the vessel. So very soon, in a few days, he's going to have vasoconstriction, massive vasoconstriction. That that can lead to ischemic stroke. Okay, ischemic stroke. And what else? Typically in like one week or a few days, it ruptures again. And if it ruptures again, you're dead. Like in, in this case, like 60% of people die. 
And those who survived, if they really bleed, they die 100%. Like, I want to exaggerate, but it's like this. So, your goal is what? Your goal is to find the aneurysm and send it for neurosurgery and do something with the aneurysm, okay? So that is crucial. You never should un underestimate severe headache and so on, okay? It could be this. So better to send him five times for CT than don't send him at once. This could be like malpractice, a re real malpractice, okay? So don't forget this. I want to like scare you, but it's true. And if it happens to someone out of your family, you would be like blaming yourself because if he survived this and he's so sort of okay, only headache, he can rib bleed in a few days and he's dead. Okay? And of course, it doesn't mean he's going to be totally fine, but what will you do in case of. Uh, first, you, you, if you find blood in. Watch out. On some cities, you don't have to see blood. What can you still do? You do a lumbar puncture. And if there's blood in it, ah, it could be this. So then immediately you send him where? You know, there's a rap. Sometimes they are so big, the aneurysms, that actually you can sort of see them. Because what happened? It ruptured. It ruptured. But immediately it was blocked by a thrombus. But it's not preserved. So very soon, in, in three, four days, five, one week, it can really. Okay. So you have to find it. You have to find this. this, this uh, this, I don't know, this, it's a bean, or you, know, you have to find it. And what, what is the golden, I mean, with CT you confirm it's bleeding, but you want to find the aneurysm. So what will be the golden standard for, to find the aneurysm there? Angiography, that's the only way. That's the best. Of course you could do MRI. Now, now the MRIs are getting so great that very soon we're going to only use MRI, like, like the with the contrast with the gadolinium so so there, there are beautiful reconstructions so it's getting pretty cool with, with MRS and they're, they're getting faster than CT sensor etc but there are there, there are many problems you know metal don't ever bring a metal to a MRI room okay. it is so thin I mean the barogenic metal okay but anyways so you do a angio graphy and what you have to tell them is I want to do four vessel hey I don't want to do a regular brain angiography. I want to do four vessel angiography. And the point is why, as I told you, and, I, and as, I, as I draw it over here, you can have aneurysms, multiple aneurysms, and anywhere. And if you're doing three vessel angiography, that means that they will put on contrast to one carotid, second one, and one vertebral artery. It's sort of a common thing to do only three arteries. Okay. But if you are suspicious for aneurysm, the last vertebral artery could have it too. So you have to do all the vessels that are coming to the brain, and you are looking for aneurysms. And once you find it, if you find one, you know this one ruptured, and you send him. You have two options. One of the options is to to do a real surgery. It's called clipping. And do we have a Turkish guy over here? But anyways, this guy was studying in Germany, but his name is Yassargel. Yassargel, I think he spelled like this is a. You remember who's the most famous neurosurgeon of last first half last century? I told you. Who's that? The most famous neurosurgeon of the first half of last century. Who's that? Come on. Who knows it? Even paramedics don't talk about it. No, no. In German, you know it. You know the name. It's Cushing. Yeah. Cushing. Harvey Cushing was a neurosurgeon, but I know I told it to my group. Ah. But anyway, that's how you should remember that the Cushing's disease is hypophysis. He was drilling hypophysis. He was drilling brains. This guy, Cushing, Harvey Cushing. Okay, and you have other, you have Cushing reactions. So, so the most famous guy was Cushing of the first century, of the first half, but of the second half was this Turkish guy studying in Germany and, and working in Germany, and his name is Yassargil. And he's the one who invented the clips for aneurysms, okay? So the, what you do is, it's a dangerous surgery. 
And because the point is, you have to have so you have to do, the more surgeries you do, the better you are. In this case, especially, the the clip looks like this. Okay, it's a it's a string and it, it has a branch. Okay, and you you compress it, you put it on the internet and you release it, and it's gonna close it. So so you're you're putting I'm sorry you're putting a this was a breasted aneurysm, and you're clipping it like this. Clipping it like, and this stays there forever. It should, so it should be aferromagnetic. You don't want to put a person with a iron into MRI. So, so okay, so and it stays there. And this is Yasser Gil's clip, and he's the greatest guy who developed it uh, in Germany, and then now he's in the U.S. But he's old. He's very old. But anyways, so remember Yasser Gil clip. But this is a serious surgery, so they have to open it here. They go from the side, they find the villus side. If, if the neurosin is there, they, find, they, they, they pull your brain bit up, and they put a clip there. Sometimes they clip a neuron with it, so you can <laughs> parse this, okay? It depends how skilled they are, okay? And with, with, remember now the, how the blood is there, and, and the vessel is irritated, it's very fragile. So it's really a tough work, and, and they consider this as the peak of neurosurgery in a way. Especially the ones which do it, they consider it as the peak. Okay, but, but anyway, so so everyone, all neurosurgeons want to do aneurysm. So it's good to go to Finland. Yeah, maybe it's a tip for you. You, you can practice a lot there. Yeah. Anyway, so that's clipping. And what is the other option, which is much better? I would like that more. But in some cases, you cannot use it. And that's coiling. That's endovascular. So you come from... You, you come from the, you, you come, tip, depends which, where it is, but you come here and you put a coil in it. So, uh, so you, with the Seldinger method, you just, like if you would do coronary arteries, you go higher, you go to the brain, and you put uh, coils, which is, which are wires. You put a wires there, here, and the idea is this will get like uh, blocked. It, it, will, it irritates there, it makes a thrombus going to be formed very well over there and it's like sealed, okay? But what is the problem with this one, danger? Okay, oops, and it, the coil flies here and you're going to have what? Stroke. You're going to have stroke. So that's one. And the disadvantage is if the aneurysm is open like this, you cannot put it there. So you have to go for a clip, okay? Yeah? But obviously, for brain, it's much better to go from through the vessels there than to go with the open surgery. Okay, so coiling and clipping—that's the question. That's the clipping or coiling. Okay, and these all of these bleeds are called atypical because they are not typically uh, placed like the, the the ping pong ball over there. So every time you have an atypical bleeding somewhere else, somewhere in front, somewhere in the back, or super, you know, oh, we have to do a surgery, or we have to find out what's behind it, okay? Well, the typical hypertensive bleeding, you know, oh, rehabilitation, okay? But with atypical bleeds, you always should find out what is the cause, because it's very suspicious, okay? It's suspicious. And you want to find aneurysm, or you want to find AV malformation. And AV malformation, again, you have it since childhood, since birth. So you can have it anywhere, you know, in liver, you have it a lot. And, uh, but you can have it in brain. And the problem with the AVM is, is that the structure is, first of all, you don't have a capillary system uh, between the arteries and veins. And it is much more fragile. So it's prone for, again, bursting. Okay, and AVM can be really anywhere. It can be like, uh, it can be here, yeah. It's like, it's more like a chaotic, yeah. It can be very small, it can be very big. And of course, if this ruptures, it can be anywhere. You can have it in brainstem too, which is very bad. Anything that explodes in your brainstem basically means death, okay. So, and you can have it in... Yeah, so anywhere. AV malformation can, can be anywhere, but again, you are bleeding atypically, okay? And very probably you're going to bleed into the sub, subarachnoid space, okay? But first, remember the aneurysms. Those are the most important ones, okay? So there's a typical bleeding, the hypertensive bleeding, 
typically the peripheral arteries are behind it, and there is atypical on anything you can figure out, which is not typical. So, especially aneurysms and AV malformations. Okay. So this is close. So these were the hemorrhagic strokes. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.